You guys ready to go get something to eat? Let's do it. Let's do it. Welcome to Hunt and Gather with the Chatters. Today we're going to talk about how to field dress uh, large mammals such as deer. Um, we'll basically have three sections that we talk about. Uh, gutting, skinning, and quartering out your game. And remember the most important part too is to try to get these done in a timely manner. Uh, your meat will taste a lot better and you won't have any of that gamey taste that you sometimes hear about. Alright, you ready to get started? Okay, so we're going to gut him. Uh, so we basically just make an incision uh, just in front of the sex organs there. And we're just going to go in about that far and we're going to zip him up to the ribs. And then we're going to cut along one side of the ribs, actually cut into two or three ribs where it joins the sternum. And then we'll just pull all the guts out and, uh, and get him cooled off. Hold that other leg up. Yeah, can you? There it goes. Okay. A little bit higher on this part. If I recall, your gutting job was a lot messier than mine. I feel like I have kind of a an art for it. Mine, he was at a 45 degree angle and so it's real life. Like it entered towards the front of his body and it exited towards the back on the opposite side. And so I, I knew the guts were already tore up no matter what. Anyhow, there's kind of a, a lining in here that holds all of the organs. And if you can cut around it, it makes it really nice for just dragging them out. Yeah, that's that diaphragm, huh? That muscle that brings air into yeah. the lungs. And... Actually, the heart might be okay. It looks like it was a lung shot, so... Keep yeah, see, on mine, I, I shot the heart out. But it looks like you just got lucky and he died at old age or something. I don't know about that. Again, I just want to be really careful as I'm pulling all this stuff out because the last thing you want is a bunch of guts on your meat. And if you can prevent it, it's great. It's real life if the shot is what it is. Okay, now there is one part in here you want to be careful not to cut the tenderloins. Make sure we don't, you know, mess it up. And then the coal in here, I like to kind of milk it. And then make sure the open end gets outside the body cavity there. Okay, let's go ahead and tip him and drain him. There's a pretty good one there to skin him out. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we already got the gear, the deer gutted. Uh, so now we're just. 
just gonna make an incision just through the skin from here all the way up to here on both legs. get that slit up there. Now we're going to skin this rear leg just to the base of the main body. You want to be as careful as you can not to cut into the meat too much. tendon and the leg because that'll be a good hanging place to place our hanging rope. Okay now we'll do the other leg. And you want to do this in the shade because you want your meat to uh, not spoil or sometimes in between spoiling and being just wonderful tasting, it'll get a little gamey taste if you let it heat up too much. Okay, so now we're gonna hang it by one rear leg. get a rock or something because I'm by myself right now. What works good is one of those come-alongs, but we backpacked way in here a couple miles, and so, uh, you know, I just carry a short rope in my fanny pack. Uh, and normally if you had another person, but my wife went to get the large ring backpack, uh, that would help too. But anyways, we got it hung in the tree by one leg. Now we're basically gonna keep skinning, and it's like you're taking off a sock. Uh, before we do that though, we got to deal with the tail. So we're going to skin all the way to the base of the tail. And then we're going to cut the tail off. Uh, I got a little saw I carry. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're gonna unroll it like a big sock. You're basically halfway skinning it with just your hands, but you're also skinning it with the knife. Yeah, so this deer, the bullet came in over here. Uh, he was kind of angled towards me, and then it exited right here. But it ended up going through the heart, and so that was pretty cool. He, uh, you know, he didn't live very long. skin down to the front legs. And then when we get to a front leg, we're actually going to skin along the back side of that front leg. Uh, we're going to make an incision just in the skin along the back side down to about here. and you only got to skin down to that last uh, joint the knee if you will because uh, this is the shank there's good hamburger there but there's really no meat between the knee and the, the foot okay now we'll do the other front leg Okay, now we're going to skin the neck down to the base of the head because uh, there is a lot of meat in the neck and uh, I like to use it for hamburger um, but there's, there's quite a bit of meat there. Now we're just going to cut through the neck with the knife as much as we can and then I'll use my saw to cut through the actual neck bones.
while he's cooling off a little, I'm gonna go ahead and make an incision here and an incision here at 90 degree angles and cut the horns off. Uh, in Arizona, you just have to have the horns uh, for proof of sex on deer. So we got our rack, we'll bring that back with us. Uh, these are, uh, in Arizona we have a, it's like the smallest variety of whitetail, it's called a coos deer. So if you're back east you might be looking at this going, wow he shot a pretty small one. Uh, but this is actually a, a decent buck in Arizona. Super happy. That should make a good sandwich. Mm. Oh, that ain't right. Wait, there's a better way. Better than this? That's setting the bar kind of low. Here, it's the Hunt and Gather with the Chatters cookbook. It's got awesome recipes that are inexpensive, taste delicious, and it's even got tips for field dressing and butchering. Thanks, Hunt and Gather with the Chatters. Find it on Amazon now. Sharpen my knife real quick. Maybe clean it off a little too. I like these uh, Smiths knife sharpeners. To me, they're just like one of the neatest inventions ever, uh, right there after fire. Um, anyways, they work really fast. Give it about 12 wraps, and you're back in business. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the front legs. The front legs, there's no joint. It's just muscle tissue holding it together. So you just take your knife and cut on the back side and you can remove them that way. Uh, actually, I lied to you though. Before I remove them, I want to cut off the haired portion. So I'll use my saw for that. remove the front legs. We're just going to cut right along the rib cage there. Um, you can tell where the muscles are separated. And you can feel the big shoulder blade there. Keep cutting on the back side till you get it free. Okay, and then we're going to lay it on a nice clean rock that's in the shade. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off that other front leg. Just trim him between the shoulder blade and, and the body cavity. Okay, and I'm going to lay it on my rock in the shade. Next, I'm going to get out those tenderloins, those two muscles right there. We're going to trim those out. That's uh, the filet mignon on a deer or elk. Yeah, there's two of those in there and uh, man, I tell you what, that's some of the best eating there is. Now I'm going to trim the back straps off. So I'm going to make an incision uh, right along the spine there and I'm just going to trim off these two back straps. One on this side, one on that side. Okay. And if I was closer to water I would have
took water and uh, rinsed down this whole thing. But like I said, we backpacked in a couple miles here, so I only got a little bit of water in my canteen, and that's for myself. So. So there's our back straps off our coos deer. That's a nice um, back strap. We're gonna get the one on the other side. The back strap on a deer elk is uh, essentially the New York strip or the big half of a T-bone, uh, you know, if it was a cow. So pretty choice cut of meat too. We never grind the back strap. We always smoke it or make steaks out of it or, you know, something to that nature. Well, and you could get crazy and you could even take a saw and cut it into a T-bone but it's just a lot of work when you're trying to take care of it out in the field. Yeah, and that's what I was explaining. We're two miles in, so we're not gonna get fancy like that. Basically, we're gonna do everything with a knife. Okay. All right, um, can you get me a sack out of there for the loose meat? So next we're gonna trim off all the loose meat off the neck, the outside of the ribs. You can take a saw and remove the ribs, but instead we're just gonna trim the meat off of the ribs. And, uh, and then we'll get everything off except for the two rear legs. And you know, along the gunshots here, we wanna kinda cut around that area because there could be trace amounts of lead. So this flank, we're gonna cut it off. And then it looks like there's meat there, but I'm, I'm hitting the vertebrae, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we're basically done with the meat there. Um, now we're going to cut off the rear legs. So the rear legs have a ball joint like that. And so all you need is a knife, but we're just going to be cutting into that ball joint and cut around it. So we're going to start right here in the middle. And we're basically trimming that pelvis, looking for that ball joint. So you're just filling that bone and There, you can see the ball joint there. Okay. big animal like an elk or a moose that rear leg is so thick you're gonna want to split it to get the meat where it's maybe only that wide uh, otherwise it has trouble cooling off fast enough you know even in really cold weather or even just get it off the bone and definitely flip the meat yeah so now we're gonna go ahead and trim this rear leg off the skeleton and then the rope will still be attached and actually let me get one more rundown on any loose meat. Because once this skeleton falls, it'll be too dirty to salvage. A little bit there. You know, all these little pieces add up. And you throw it into the grind and it really does make a difference. And again, it, it probably fools you on the camera, but you know, this is the vertebrae down the 
spine, so I'm actually hitting bone there. So there's there's no meat there. Just searching for that ball joint. There it is. So let me check the loose meat around this leg that I just cut off because it's kind of hard to do the one that's holding it. Okay, so now that we got this rear leg, we're just going to untie it and then we'll cut off the... Actually, we'll cut it while it's hanging. Okay. We're just going to bag up the meat, get it in our backpack. Uh, my wife's going to keep hunting in our blind while I backpack back to the truck and I'll uh, when I get to the truck I'll rinse it off really well all the meat and then I'll put it in the cooler thanks for watching hunt and gather with the chatters hopefully you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something great uh, if you're interested in finding out what happens next as far as the butchering process check out our butchering video and we'll see you next time when we go get something to eat